Today we are going to learn about the reactions involving the condensed bases. Okay, so first of all, we need to know what are these condensed bases and how can you relate them with your uh, thermodynamic properties. Okay, so uh, understanding the condensed bases. Condensed bases are those bases which has a predefined volume. Okay, like your uh, liquid state or your solid state, they have a confined volume. And all the thermodynamic properties are related to these uh, confined volume. Okay, so these are your condensed phases. Okay, now let us understand that how this condensed phases has, uh, how can you understand about the thermodynamics or the reactions of your condensed phases? Okay, so basically, basically, there are two different kinds of reactions that are going to, uh, we are going to study in this part. That is your oxide formation. That is if uh, your oxide is in solid or the liquid phase, then how will your reaction be affecting? Similarly, the relation between your sulfide, that is SO2, and your oxygen relation. Okay, based upon this, uh, uh, based upon the relation between your sulfur dioxide and oxygen, you obtain your predominance area diagram, right? Similarly, the stability of an oxide is decided by your Ellingham diagram. Okay, so mainly in our today's lecture, we are going to study about your Ellingham diagram. And we will see about different observations related to your Ellingham diagram. Okay. All right. So as I told you, that condensed phases are basically those phases. Condensed phases are those phases which have predefined volume. And we know these cases, which are these uh, uh, condensed phases, basically your liquid phase or the solid phase. They have a fixed volume or a predefined volume or a confined volume. And because of that, we call them as the condensed phases. Okay. So all those reactions in which uh, uh, there is an involvement of these condensed phases comes under the category of your uh, con uh, reactions containing or involving your condensed phases. Okay, so let us understand. Basically, as I told you, that we are, will be focusing our study based upon two different kinds of reactions that is, your involving your uh, uh, metal oxide and similarly, the reactions involving your metal sulfide. Okay, so as per your oxide reaction, the reaction containing your metal oxide, you obtain your Ellingham diagram. Similarly, the reactions involving your sulfides, your metal sulfides, and their stability, we basically obtain your predominance area diagram. Okay. So let us start with your Ellingham diagram. Let us see what is your Ellingham diagram and what are different observations for your Ellingham diagram. Okay, so your very first part, what you need to understand that this Ellingham diagram, it basically tells us about the uh, free energy relation with your temperature, right? So this is nothing but your delta G versus T curve. Okay, so if I draw your Ellingham diagram, It is nothing but your delta G versus T curve. Okay. Where delta G is what? Nothing but the change in the free energy of the reaction, where T is your temperature. Right. So the uh, curve drawn between your delta G versus T will give you the Ellingham diagram. Okay. Now, what do you need to understand that uh, this Ellingham diagram is basically used in order to determine which oxide is more stable? Okay, mainly, mainly those oxide, those oxide lines which are present at the bottom most part of your Ellingham diagram are much more stable as compared to uh, the above part or the above oxide. Okay, and similarly, similarly, those metals which are present uh, at the bottom line are the, at the bottom most positions of your Ellingham diagram, they form your most stable oxide, right? So definitely these metals can easily reduce the above oxide in order to form the stable metal oxide. 
Okay, so it not only just tells us about the stability of the oxide, but it also tells us that which metal is capable of reducing the other metal oxide. Okay, now what you need to know. Okay, so if I give you in the bullet point, the Lingam diagram is used to calculate the stability of the oxide. Okay, along with this, along with this, we also opted which metal is capable, which metal is capable of reducing other metal oxide of reducing other metal oxide okay so okay so as i was saying that your ellingham diagram it is basically made for we uh, basically study for your oxide part but apart from your oxide your ellingham diagram is also made for your sulfides okay and fluoride so similarly in these cases also they tell us about the stability of different sulfides and fluorides respectively okay all right so let us learn how this ellingham diagram is generated and how can you say that your delta g versus t curve is accurate okay so basically basically if i take a reaction let us understand with the help of a reaction it will be much more simpler in that case right so if i take a reaction say m plus o2 gives mo2 okay your m is your solid state oxygen is definitely in your gas state and the oxide that we obtained is also in the solid state okay so if i write what is my delta g for this reaction my delta g can be written in terms of your enthalpy and entropy value right so delta g is nothing but delta h minus t delta s okay so where delta h is what basically the change in the enthalpy of the reaction if this delta h is positive in nature that is that we obtain a positive value then we can say that this reaction is actually endothermic in nature right what do you mean by endothermic reaction basically you need to supply sufficient amount of energy in order to proceed this reaction in the forward direction okay similarly if your delta h is negative so that if delta h is positive it is an endothermic reaction Okay. Similarly, if your delta H is negative, it is known as your exothermic reaction. That is, the heat is being liberated from the reaction if uh, from the system if this reaction occurs. Okay, so such a kind of a reactions are basically known as your exothermic reaction. Okay, now if I calculate these values, I am basically uh, interested in my Ellingham diagram, right? What is your Ellingham diagram? It is nothing but delta G versus T curve. Okay, so from this uh, line, from this expression, that is delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. I can say that my delta G is basically equal to minus T delta S plus delta H. Okay, so from here, from here, the slope of my line, this is basically the equation of a straight line, right? That is y equal to m x plus c. Okay, where m or the slope of this straight line <coughs> is nothing. But the negative of the change in the entropy, right? Whereas the intercept is basically given as your delta H or the change in the enthalpy of the reaction. Okay. Now considering that uh, this reaction is going in the forward direction. Okay. So if the reaction is going in the forward direction, then we will take your delta G to be negative value, right? That is the reaction is feasible. Okay. So if the reaction is going in the forward direction, delta G. Is negative, right? If the reaction is feasible, your delta G will be negative. Okay. So if your delta G is negative, then definitely, definitely, uh, I can relate it uh, with your delta G versus temperature curve, right? If your delta G is negative, okay. So basically, inside your Ellingham diagram, your delta G is basically represented over your y-axis. Right, whereas temperature is represented over your x-axis, and your temperature will always be positive. Right, so out of the four quadrant, this is your positive x, this is your negative x, this is your positive y, 
and this is your negative y. Okay, so this is your first quadrant, your second quadrant, your third quadrant, and your fourth quadrant. Okay, so out of the four quadrant, or be, uh, based upon the two axes, your x and y, we basically see that your Ellingham diagram is a diagram that is drawn in your fourth axis or the fourth quadrant. Okay, what are the, what is your fourth quadrant? Basically, your y axis is basically negative in nature. That is your delta G is negative. Okay, whereas your temperature is positive. Okay, so basically, basically you obtain your Ellingham diagram in the fourth quadrant. Okay, all right. So let us see. Let us see different observations related to your Ellingham diagram. And how can you relate this Ellingham diagram with your thermodynamic part? Okay. All right. So let us start with your observation. Basically, there are five major observations that are important for us to understand. Basically, we have five uh, major observations. All right, so your observation number one. Now, as per the observation number one, if you practically see your Ellingham diagram, you will observe that most of the lines are going in the upward direction, right? Most of the lines, most of the oxide lines I'm talking about, most of the oxide lines. Go in the upward direction. Now, how is that so? And why is this happening? Basically, that is what we are going to learn here. Okay. So, if I take an example, uh, in my previous reaction, I told that I took a metal that is solid in nature and combined it with oxygen, that is your gaseous state, right? And it gave me the metal oxide that is also in the gaseous state. Okay. So if I ask you that what is the change in the entropy of the reaction? Basically, the slope uh, is uh, depending upon the change in the entropy of the reaction, right? And depending upon the slope, whether it is a positive slope or a negative slope, the line or the oxide line uh, that we are drawing inside your Ellingham diagram, it will go either in the upward direction or in the downward direction. Okay. So first of all, we need to calculate what is the slope. What is the slope of this uh, reaction? Okay, and in order to understand that, what is the slope, we need to calculate what is the change in the entropy of this reaction. Okay, so as for this reaction, as for this reaction, I can say that the change in entropy, now entropy is also a state function, right? So the change in entropy of the reaction is nothing, but the entropy of your product, some of the entropies of your product minus some of the entropies of your reactant. Okay, as since you have two reactant and you have only a single product, so definitely, definitely, we are talking in terms of your uh, some of the entropies of your product minus some of the entropies of your reactant. Okay, all right, all right. I mistakenly took this uh, metal oxide to be in the gaseous state. It is actually in the solid state, right? Your metal oxide, most of the metal oxides are in the solid state. So we'll be considering the general case. That is your metal oxide is in the solid state. Okay. So if I calculate what is the change in entropy of this reaction, let us see what happens. Okay. So entropy of the product. So this is the entropy of your metal dioxide or MO2 minus entropy of your reactant. So this is the entropy of your metal plus the entropy of your oxygen. Okay. Now we know, we know that uh, the entropy value, what is the relation between entropy for different phases? Basically, your gaseous state, it is very much higher as compared to your liquid as compared to your solid. Right. And this relation is in such manner that if you compare your entropies of your gaseous state, uh, they are so much higher as compared to the entropy of the solid phase that you can actually ignore those values. Okay. You can actually ignore those values. For instance, for instance, if I just taking a random example, 
if I have my entropy as thousand for your gaseous phase, then your, for your liquid, you will have the entropy in the terms of your 10 or the multiples of 10. Okay. Whereas for your solid, you will be having the entropy in the terms of your 0 0.1 or 0 0.001. Okay. So it is so less that you can actually ignore this value or you can ignore the value of your entropy for the solid as compared to the entropies of your gaseous phase. Okay. All right. So now we see, we know that this is your solid phase. This is your solid phase and this is your gaseous phase. Right. So if I calculate the change in the entropy of the reaction, this is what, this is nothing but the uh, entropy of your solid phase, right? So I can directly ignore it and say that it is equal to zero. Similarly, the entropy of your pure metal is also equal to zero as since it is also a solid phase, right? So your delta S reaction is nothing but minus of SO2, that is your gaseous phase, right? Now from here, what we observe, basically, basically the change in the entropy of your reaction is negative in nature. Right? It is negative in nature. Whenever we are obtaining your metal oxide in the solid phase, your change in the entropy of the reaction will be negative in nature. Okay? Now, the slope of this uh, line, the slope of this line or the oxide line, it is what? It is nothing but minus delta S. Right? So, this negative sign will combine with the entropy value of your oxygen of the gaseous phase okay? and your slope will become positive. Okay, so once the slope becomes positive, this is the basic reason why most of the lines or, or the oxide lines we are talking about, they go in the upward direction. Okay, because the slope of these lines basically comes positive, and this is positive because the entropy itself is a negative value. Okay, so I can say most of the lines go upward. All right, so coming on to our observation number two. What is your observation number two? Okay, so if you uh, look carefully inside your aluminum diagram, you will find the one line, one line only, where there's, which is an horizontal line, right? It is like uh, close to parallel, being parallel to your x axis or the temperature axis. Okay, now uh, what happens in this case and how can you say that it is parallel to your x-axis or the temperature axis and what are these uh, oxides and reactions that occur, okay. So basically, basically in your observation number two, if you find out this, re uh, this reaction inside this kind of a line inside your Ellingham diagram, so you can easily observe what is the relation or the reaction that is occurring over there, okay. So this occurs for the reaction where your carbon Combine with your oxygen to give a carbon dioxide. Okay, so your carbon is in solid state, oxygen is in gaseous state, and carbon dioxide is also in the gaseous space. Okay, now if I calculate what is my change in the entropy of the reaction, this is what this is nothing but the entropy of your product minus entropy of your reactant. Right, so from here, from here, we know that uh, you have only one product that is your carbon dioxide in the gaseous phase. So this is nothing but the entropy of your carbon dioxide. Now this is your gaseous phase. Please remember, this is your gaseous phase. So you cannot uh, neglect this value. Okay. Minus entropy of your carbon, which is in the solid state, plus the entropy of your oxygen, which is again in the gaseous phase. Okay. So I can easily ignore this entropy of your solid phase or the carbon when we are comparing in terms of your gaseous phases. Okay. Now, what you need to know, what you need to see over there, that the entropy values, they have a, a single mole of your carbon dioxide is produced by combining your one mole of oxygen with one mole of carbon. Right. So, overall, overall, I can say that uh, all the moles, all the elements we are, we are taking or considering for one mole of the component. Okay. Now, in this case, in this case, since both carbon dioxide and your oxygen, they are in the gaseous phase. So, their entropy value will be somewhat similar. Right. Although if they are not equal because of the different atoms and uh, atomic energies, but somewhat in the gaseous phase, 
the entropy value will be somewhat equal to uh, the, means it will be approximately equal okay so from here from here your delta s is nothing but uh, s of carbon dioxide minus s of oxygen okay and since both of them are in the gaseous phase and both of them are approximately equal so from here you will obtain your delta s is approximately equal to 0 okay so that is the change in the entropy uh, value or the change in the entropy of the reaction for this kind of a reaction is basically equal to 0 okay and because of that, because of that, uh, since the uh, slope is zero, okay, delta S is what? Delta S is nothing but the slope, right? So if the slope is zero, I can say that this line basically is horizontal to the temperature axis. Okay. So this is your observation number two that your C plus O2 giving carbon dioxide, this line is basically horizontal to the temperature axis. Okay, or it is a horizontal line. All right, coming on to our next observation. Okay, so what is your third observation? Observation number three. Now, as per our third observation, if you clearly watch your car, uh, Ellingham diagram, you will find one line which is going in the downward direction. Okay. Now, how does this line goes in the downward direction and what is the basis behind that? We are going to learn this. Okay. So, basically, if you check this uh, line, the, if you check over your Ellingham diagram, you will find that this is nothing but the reaction of your carbon plus oxygen given two carbon monoxide okay now again in this case you have one mole of your carbon that is uh, sorry two moles of your carbon which is in the solid phase right whereas one mole of your oxygen which is in the gaseous phase right similarly you have two moles of your carbon monoxide which is also again in the gaseous phase okay so if i ask you to calculate what is the change in the entropy of this complete reaction so delta S reaction is nothing but the sum of the entropies of your product minus sum of the entropies of your reactant. Okay. So this is what in product side, you have only one uh, product that is your carbon monoxide. Okay. So this is nothing but two into entropy of your carbon monoxide minus. Okay. Now again, uh, in terms of your reactant, you can say. 2 into entropy of your carbon plus 1 into entropy of your oxygen. Okay, now this is your solid state, this is your gaseous phase, and this is again your gaseous phase. Right? So, definitely, since it is a solid phase, so I can neglect this value or ignore this value. Right? This will be nothing but equal to 0 as compared to your gaseous phases. Your entropies of your solid phases uh, will be much, much lower, right? So I can easily drop this down and we can compare your uh, uh, overall reaction or the direction of your oxide layer or oxide, uh, oxide line based upon the entropy value or the change in the entropy of this reaction, okay? Or the gaseous phase basically. All right. Now, what you need to understand here is that basically you have two moles of your carbon monoxide. Okay. So, for instance, for instance, let us understand in terms of your example. Okay. So, if I say that uh, my change in the entropy value, or sorry, the entropy of my carbon monoxide is somewhat equal to one thousand one. Okay. Whereas the entropy of my oxygen in the gaseous phase is approximately equal to 1000. These are your some hypothetical observations or hypothetical examples, you can say. Okay. All right. So if I ask you that what will be the change in the overall entropy of the reaction? Okay. Now, what do you need to see that your carbon monoxide basically contains two moles? 
Okay, so you need to multiply with two. Okay, whereas whereas your oxygen it is you be it is being utilized in a single uh you can say only one mole of your oxygen is being utilized. Okay, so from here from here I can say that by entropy the entropy of your product will be very much larger as compared to the entropy of your reactant. Right, this is what this is nothing but two zero zero two, right. And if you subtract it with your initial condition, this is nothing but one thousand two. Okay, so this is actually one thousand two, which was far more than the value of your initial uh, carbon monoxide. That is the entropy of your carbon monoxide. Okay, so definitely in this case, I can say that uh, the value or the delta S of the reaction. This will be actually a positive quantity. Okay, so from here I can say that delta S reaction is actually a positive quantity. Okay, and the reason behind it is that the entropy of your product is much higher as compared to the entropy of your reactant. Okay, so if your delta S of the reaction is basically positive, then your slope is what minus delta S, right? So this will be negative. Okay. So basically, your slope has become negative, and because of that, this line basically goes in the downward direction. Okay. All right. So let us move on to our next observation. That is observation number four. Okay, what is in this observation? It is actually quite important. Okay, so basically, I told you that inside your Ellingham diagram, that is drawn over your fourth portrait, you will be obtaining your different oxide lines, right? And based upon the position of these oxide lines, whether they are close to the bottom of the Ellingham diagram or at much higher uh, distances. You can determine which oxide will be much more stable, right? Now, what was seen? What was seen during your Ellingham diagram that after a certain specific temperature, after a uh, specific temperature, the oxide, the stability of the oxide basically changes. And why does that happen? Uh, happen so is basically because of the intersecting of the two lines inside inside an Ellingham diagram. Okay. So our next observation of the observe or the observation number four is basically telling us about the intersecting intersecting lines of a Lingam diagram. Okay. So if I draw my Lingam diagram. This is a general situation. This is a general format in which the Ellingham diagram is drawn. Okay, so your x-axis basically represents your temperature, and y-axis basically represents your delta G. Okay, so this is increasing in this order. Okay, it is increasing in this order, and your temperature is basically increasing according to your rightward direction. Okay, now. What happens? Let us see. Basically, you have two different metal oxide lines. Okay, let me take two different reactions, and based upon that, we'll see what are these two different metal oxide lines and uh, how they are intersecting at a particular temperature. Okay, so I take my first reaction as uh, considering a hypothetical component A. When it combines with your oxygen, it gives you AO two. Okay, now again, this A is solid. Oxygen is in gaseous phase and AO2 is again solid in nature. Okay. Similarly, similarly, you have my uh, second reaction that is 2B plus oxygen gives 2BO. Okay. Again, these are your solid phases. Oxygen is definitely gaseous and this BO is also solid phase. Okay. Now, what happens during the intersecting of the lines? That is what we are going to learn over. Okay. So let me take. That there are two lines going in this manner. Okay, so basically the intersection occurs at this temperature. Okay, 
so your uh, intersection basically occurs at a particular temperature let me call this temperature as t1 okay so if i say uh, this line is basically my a in equilibrium with your ao2 whereas this line basically represents 2b in equilibrium with 2bo okay now what do you observe in this condition basically basically you have three reasons right one reason that is below your t1 temperature another reason is that at t1 temperature and similarly the third reason is where the temperature t1 is actually lower as compared to the initial condition right that is your temperature is higher than your t1 temperature okay so what happens in this situation we are going to learn about this we are going to understand this. okay now if i consider if i consider for my temperature less than my t1 temperature for my temperature less than my t1 temperature so this is the temperature i am talking about okay so if i draw a straight line from this uh, temperature axis okay we find we find that the free energy of a converting to ao2 free energy of a converting to ao2 is much higher okay uh, this uh, free energy of a converting to ao2 is much lower right it is much lower as compared to the free energy of your b converting into bo okay let me take this uh, free energy values as your g1 and g2 respectively okay so basically basically uh, at your temperature t which is less than your t1 temperature your metal oxide uh, that is ao2 is much more stable as compared to the other metal oxide that is your bo okay so if your metal oxide ao2 is more stable then definitely definitely the metal a can easily reduce the metal b or bo okay it can easily reduce your metal bo metal oxide bo okay and form a more stable oxide okay so basically when the temperature is less than t1 your ao2 this line is stable this oxide line is stable and your a metal can reduce your a metal can reduce the bo line okay that is basically your b oxide you can easily reduce your b oxide okay and because of that you obtain uh, the this is what this is at the temperature which is less than your t1 temperature okay similarly if your temperature uh, is basically equal to your t1 temperature then definitely your ao2 and bo both are in equilibrium right so if both of them are in equilibrium then definitely definitely you cannot say whether the reaction will be going in the forward or the backward direction okay whether your ao2 will be appearing next or your bo will be appearing next you cannot determine that okay similarly if my uh, if my temperature is greater than t1 okay so if my temperature t is greater than t1 okay now what do you understand in this case is basically the free energy of your bo is less than the free energy of your ao2 in this case right so if the free energy of your bo is less than the free energy of your ao2 okay the free energy of bo is basically less than the free energy of your ao2 this basically tells us this basically tells us that which phase will be more stable or which oxide will be much more stable right when the free energy or uh, when the free energy of the material reduces down then definitely that material becomes much more stable right so in this case if the free energy of your bo is less than the free energy of your ao2 then definitely your bo is more stable in this case 
your BO is more stable in this case. Okay. Another thing that you need to understand that your metal B, okay, you have your metal B, it can easily reduce, can easily reduce, can easily reduce your AO2 line or the AO2 axis. Okay. So your B metal, it can easily reduce uh, your AO2 line. Okay. And this is what we learn in your intersection of your different lines inside your Ellingham diagram. Okay. So if I summarize everything, we have uh, seen uh, based upon this observation number four I'm talking about. Okay. So basically, basically, basically uh, your free energy, uh, whichever phase will be having a lower free energy, that will be more stable, right? whichever phase is having a lower energy, that will be more stable. And this uh, lower and the upper limits are basically de decided after drawing this uh, particular okay, point of intersection, the two intersecting lines at which position they intersect. Based upon that, we determine that what will happen in the condition when the temperature is less than your uh, equilibrium temperature or uh, intersection temperature, you can say. Okay. Similarly, what happens in the case when the temperature is greater than your intersection temperature? Okay. So we have discussed everything in this part. All right. So coming on to our fifth and the last observation. Okay. Now you must have seen in your Ellingham diagram. This is your delta G and this is your temperature. Right? Many of the oxide lines, they grow at a particular temperature, okay? they have their particular slope, and right at a certain temperature, okay, they has a certain change in the slope. Okay? So if I am talking about this condition, if I have my slope M1, okay, let me take this as A converting into AO2. Okay? In this case, in this case, Initially, I had my slope of the line as M1, and right after passing the, to the temperature of your T1, okay, let me take it as T2 so that it is not confused with your uh, uh, intersection temperature. Okay. Similarly, there will be a sudden jump in the uh, uh, slope of the line. Okay. Similarly, similarly, there could be another condition, right? There could be another condition where you must have observed a sudden drop inside the material. Okay, so it should have been going in this direction, but instead it went down in this direction. Okay. So again, I'm considering time as my T3 time. Okay. So we will be seeing this observation number five one by one based upon the uh, different cases. Okay. What happens in your case one? This is your case one I'm talking about. Okay. Similarly, this is your case two, which we are considering. Okay. All right. So let us see. Let us see that how this slope of the line changes. Okay. All right. So if I have the reaction, if I have the reaction where I have considered your reaction, right? Your A plus AO2, uh, your A plus oxygen gives your AO2, right? So if I write down this reaction, A plus O2 gives AO2. Okay. So this is your solid phase. This is your gaseous phase. And this again is your solid phase. Okay. Now, what you need to understand that uh, this, this change in the slope of the line uh, at all of a sudden is basically due to the change in the phase transformation. Okay. Now, this line, uh, the slope of the line, it goes either in the upward direction or in the downward direction, depending upon the, uh, depending upon the slope of this line. Right, the slope of this line, uh, it will go either in the upward direction or the downward direction, 
depending upon the size uh, or depending upon the side or the position where the phase transformation occurs okay so considering considering that my melting point of a is lower than the melting point of my ao2 okay if the melting point of a is lower than the melting point of your ao2 what will happen after some time okay i am increasing the temperature continuously okay so i am increasing the temperature let us see what will happen okay so basically since the melting temperature of a is much lower as compared to the melting temperature of your ao2 so there will be transformation at your reactant side right your a will convert into liquid plus oxygen i mean your gaseous phase whereas your ao2 will still remain in your solid phase okay now what will happen let us understand basically basically if i ask you to calculate what is the change in the entropy of the reaction this is nothing but the sum of the entropies of your product minus sum of the entropies of your reactant okay so what will happen in this case what is your product product is one right it is entropy of your ao2 which is actually in the solid phase okay minus entropy of your product you have two different entropies entropy of your uh, component a which is in the liquid phase whereas the entropy of your oxygen which is in the gaseous phase right so initially initially when uh, your reactant was in the solid phase it has converted into your liquid phase okay so if i write down what is my entropy the change in the entropy of the reaction for my very first reaction this is what the entropy of your product so this is the entropy of your ao2 that is your solid minus entropy of your reactant that is your a which is also solid plus okay i'm putting this in bracket oxygen in the gaseous phase okay so this will be zero this will be zero and from here i obtain that delta s of the reaction is basically equal to minus of so2 okay all right now what do you need to understand in this case basically basically that uh, this entropy of your component a has now converted into your liquid phase okay so if the entropy has converted into the liquid phase basically because the melting temperature is lower in this condition okay so what is going to happen let us understand this with an example okay so initially i have my solid as 0.1 i can i obtained my new liquid okay this is your 10 and this is your 1000 right so you can ignore your 0.1 as compared to your 1000 right but you cannot ignore your 10 which is at a much larger scale or a much larger value as compared to your 0.1 right your solid phase okay so definitely definitely you cannot ignore this portion okay so this will be approximately equal to zero okay but your change in the entropy basically the slope of this line will be nothing but minus sa in the liquid liquid phase minus s of oxygen in the gaseous phase okay this is how you calculate what is the uh, what is the slope of the line okay so i can basically say this is what this is minus if i take minus common sa plus so2 okay this is your liquid phase and this is your gaseous phase okay now this entropy is much lower as compared to your first case where you will obtaining just the entropy of your gaseous phase right so your m which is minus delta s okay now this entropy value uh, this entropy value has basically reduced up further reduced up okay so if this uh, entropy value is going to further reduce down then definitely the slope of the uh, slope of the line will be further going in the upper direction right so you can write this point basically if the slope of the line We are talking about the oxide line. Okay, 
goes in the upper direction okay when it goes in the upper direction then definitely phase transformation has occurred phase transformation has occurred in the reactant side okay all right so similarly similarly if i ask you similarly if i ask you uh, so this was what this was your case one right okay similarly if i ask you what will be your case two what will be the condition for your case two that is the line uh, this oxide line is basically going in the downward direction how is this possible let us see that okay so your case two is basically the line that is going in the downward direction Okay, now what you need to understand is the slope of the line oxide goes in the upper direction. Phase transformation has occurred in your reactant side. Okay, so similarly, similarly, if the uh, phase transformation occurs in the product side, definitely the slope of the line will keep keep on decreasing. Right, it will go in the downward direction. Okay, so let me take the same example. Okay, so I have my A plus oxygen. It gives you a o2 okay so this is your solid phase this is your gaseous phase and this initially was at solid state okay then on further increase in the temperature your melting point of a o2 is in this case is less than the melting point of a okay so basically if the melting point of a o2 is less than the melting point of a on increasing the temperature basically your oxide will be converted uh, there will be a phase transformation at the oxide side much faster as compared to the uh, reactant side right so what will happen if i find what is my change in the entropy of this reactant this is nothing but the entropy of your product right s of a o2 minus entropy of your reactant that is s of a plus s of o2 that is their respective uh, entropies right so what will happen let us see let us see so if i write down what is my entropy uh, change in the entropy of the reaction after this transformation has occurred that is your solid uh, solid product has now converted into your liquid or molten product okay so if i do so your delta s reaction what what is this this is nothing but the entropy of your product right so entropy of your a o2 minus entropy of your a plus entropy of your oxygen okay now this is in the liquid phase this is in the solid phase and this is in the gaseous phase okay so i can easily neglect this value and say that it is equal to zero okay so what is the change in the entropy of the reactant it is nothing but entropy of your ao2 minus entropy of your oxygen that is in the gaseous phase okay now understand this basically basically in the uh, very previous case we were considering that your ao2 is in the solid state <coughs> right in the above reaction you can see that this is your solid so this will be equal to zero similarly this will be equal to zero and your delta s of the reaction this is nothing but minus of so2 that is in your gaseous phase okay but what has happened in this case basically basically now there is a transformation of your product right it has converted from your solid phase to your liquid phase now you cannot ignore this value <coughs> okay so you cannot ignore the value of your entropy in this case so what will happen your delta s reaction okay so basically basically the delta s reaction in terms of the entropies of your oxygen this is a negative value right whereas this is your positive value so definitely it is going to lower down 
<coughs> okay it will still be your negative value because the entropy of your gaseous phase is much higher as compared to the entropy of your liquid phase right but their difference will be lower in that okay so if the days are uh, the difference is lowering down then definitely you can say that uh, since the days are diff uh, the difference is lowering down so you can say that the value of your delta s reaction okay it has become less negative now it is still negative but it is now less negative okay so if your delta s is less negative then it will definitely go in the uh, desired direction as per your case 2 okay that is uh, the lines of your the oxide line will go in the downward direction you can write this down over here the oxide line will go in the downward direction okay so th this is the reason why uh, you obtain the change in the slope of some lines you obtain the change in the slope of some lines uh, at a particular temperature value basically basically there is a change in the transformation of the phase okay so if the phase transformation occurs from your reactant side your line is going to go in the upward direction whereas if this uh, phase transformation occurs from your product side uh, the Ellingham diagram will be going, uh, the oxide line will be going in the downward direction. Okay. So, with this, we have completed our oxide part uh, that is uh, covered everything inside your Ellingham diagram. In the, uh, then, we will be seeing what is your uh, sulfide reactions, what are your sulfide reactions. And based upon that, we are going to generate and uh, develop what is your predominance area diagram. Okay. Thank you, everyone.